All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. It's Dr. E from today's date, November 5th, 2022. Um, still Shabbat. Hope everyone is having a peaceful and blessed one. You know, uh, this uh, particular lesson I want to share, um, and the comment shouldn't be turned off on this one. Uh, I actually got turned on by, um, by this story in this movie. <clears throat> Like many of the movies that I actually come up on about about our people, and I was kind of browsing the um, the DVD section of of, uh, of Walmart, you know, some some years ago, and of course, you know, the actors. I know the I know you know the uh, Mario and Peebles and you know Charles Dutton and that, that one brother. I forget his name. His name I think his last name is Brar. He he always plays the uppity the uppity black dude, <laughs> like in uh in uh in uh Glory with Denzel Washington. <laughs> he he plays those roles to a T, man. You know that that's it. That's definitely his call. He knows how to play those uppity kind of uppity roles. He plays the role of um, really who and what this movie is about, which is Philip Randolph. Um, he he played that role, that Mr. Brower. Matter of fact, his his uh his actual name is uh, Andre Brower. Yeah, that's the dark skinned dude on the, on the cover. And of course, everyone knows um, Rock Charles Dutton, and of course, Marlo Van Peebles. That's Melvin Van Peebles' boy. You know, doing his thing. You know, um, and I just found out recently Robert Townsend is actually behind this uh, this movie. And as with a lot of uh, a lot of black movies that don't get a big budget or, you know, kind of independently shot or whatever the case may be, you know, it's not going to be a lot of promotion about it, whatever, whatever. Really, it's kind of word of mouth. And like I said, I just happened to just just browse through the, the DVD case and saw it. And um, I didn't know anything about the story, but, I, but the actors, you know, sold it for me, you know, so I'm like, oh, this should be pretty good. And man, I'm glad I did. I mean, excellent movie. Um, taught me about uh, about the whole Pullman Porters. They used to call them Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. And this Mr. Um, Philip Randolph, he was the um, the union guy that fought for them and everything like that because they um, they, they didn't want to pay him right. And I don't know if many of you are up in those kind of those unions or whatever, but the un unions are frowned on by businesses or companies because basically, in theory, unions are supposed to force. Uh, organizations and companies to treat their employees right and fairly you know as far as compensation and you know leave family leave all that kind of stuff i mean yeah we do have federal laws in place for a lot of that stuff um but union is supposed to um you know get their workers the best deal this and that and a lot of people are not for unions i joined one once in my life you know and um i had a little issue and uh they didn't do nothing for me so that, that kind of did it for unions for me. I mean, you paying all those union fees, and I mean, for what? You know, I'd rather take my chances with, you know, if I got to get a lawyer, I'll get a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? But y'all y'all not doing what y'all supposed to do, so, I mean, what's the point? So, you know, you have you know have uh, opinions for and against unions, but um, this was back when uh, yeah, unions were definitely uh, frowned upon. So I wanted to kind of put the spotlight on Mr. Philip Randolph. Um, who really the story was was around if, if you haven't seen this movie I, I definitely recommend y'all picking it up or or bringing it up on whatever app you use for movies older movies or whatever the case may be it's definitely a five star um it's got everything you know um it really is it's a great movie man I'm, I'm just i hate that you know majority of our people probably have never even seen it right so definitely get the movie so all right that being said let's Hold on, give me one second. All right, and the spotlight is on Mr. A. Philip Randolph, and the A stands for Asa. Uh, Mr. Mr. Randolph was born April 15th, 1889, and he passed away on May 16th, 1979. Mr. Randolph was an American labor unionist and civil rights activist. In 1925, he organized and led the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, the first successful African-American-led labor union. And that's why I think his story is so important, and I want I would love for more of us to know about it. Like I said, I want to touch on those stories that you know, we really don't get a chance to hear about. That's my goal. So hopefully they can, you know, um, the, the views can be let let go with my videos, man, so people can start seeing these videos, man. You know, three, four, five hundred views, man. Come on, man. I've been consistent dropping four or five times a day. But anyway, um, so that's the reason why it's so important. It was the first successful African-American led labor union in the early civil rights movement and the labor movement. Randolph was a prominent voice. 
his continuous agitation with the support of fellow labor rights activists against racist unfair labor practices eventually helped lead President Franklin Delano Roosevelt to issue Executive Order 8802 in 1941, which bans discrimination in the defense industries during World War II. The group then successfully maintained pressure so that President Harry S. Truman proposed a new Civil Rights Act and issued Executive Orders 9980 and 9981 in 1948, promoting fair employment, anti-discrimination policies, and federal government hiring, and ending racial segregation in the armed services. Mr. Randolph was born and raised in Florida. Although he was able to attain a good education in his community at Cookman Institute, he did not see a future for himself in the discriminatory Jim Crow era South and moved to New York City just before the Great Migration. There, he became convinced that overcoming racism required collective action and he was drawn to socialism with, uh, and workers' rights. He unsuccessfully ran for the state office on the socialist ticket in the early 20s, but found more success in organizing for African-American workers' rights. In 1963, Randolph was the head of the March on Washington. See, I didn't know that which was organized by Bayard Rustin, at, at which Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. Randolph inspired the Freedom Budget, sometimes called the Randolph Freedom Budget, which aimed to deal with economic problems facing the black community. It was published by the Randolph Institute in January 1967 as, quote, a freedom budget for all Americans, end quote. All right, shortly after uh, Mr. Randolph's marriage, he helped organize the Shakespearean Society in Harlem. With them, he played the roles of Hamlet, Othello, and Romeo, among, among others. Mr. Randolph aimed to become an actor, but gave up after failing to win his parents' approval. In New York, Mr. Randolph became familiar with socialism and the ideologies espoused by the industrial workers of the world. He met Columbia University law student Chandler Owen, and the two developed a synthesis of Marxist economics and the sociological ideas of Lester Frank Ward, arguing that people could only be free could only be free if not subject to economic deprivation. So true. At this point, Mr. Randolph developed what would become his distinctive form of civil rights activism, which emphasized the importance of collective action as a way for black people to gain legal and economic equality. And we've been fighting for that since we since I mean since the first slave ship touched down in, in, in some way. It's, it's been on ever since, as we used to say. To this end, he and Owen opened an employment office in Harlem to provide job training for Southern migrants and encourage them to join trade unions. Ah, here we go. Randolph's first experience with labor organizations came in 1917 when he organized when, when, a, when a union elevator operators in New York City was organized. In 1919, he became president of the National Brotherhood of Workers of America, a union which organized among African-American shipyard and dock workers in the Tidewater region of Virginia. The union dissolved in 1921 under pressure huh, from the American Federation of Labor. His greatest success came with the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, which is with that movie 10,000 George, 10,000 black men named George centered around, who elected him president in 1925. This was the first serious effort to form a labor institution for employees of the Pullman Company, which was a major employer of African Americans. The railroads had expanded dramatically in the early 20th century, and the jobs offered relatively good employment at a time of widespread racial discrimination. Because porters were not unionized, however, most suffered poor working conditions huh? and were underpaid. There we see. There we go. Under Mr. Randolph's direction, the BSCP managed to enroll 51% of porters within a year, to which the Pullman responded with violence and firings. In 1928, after failing to win mediation under the Watson Parker Railroad Labor Act, Randolph planned a strike. This was postponed after rumors circulated that Pullman had 5,000 replacement workers ready to take the place of BSCP members. As a result of its perceived ineffectiveness, membership of the union declined. By 1933, it had only 658 members, and electricity and telephone service at headquarters had been disconnected because of non payment of the bills. Wow. Fortunes for the BSCP changed with the election of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1932. 
With amendments to the Rail Railway Labor Act in 1934, porters were granted rights under federal law. Membership in the Brotherhood jumped to more than 7,000. After years of bitter struggle, the Pullman Company finally began to negotiate with the Brotherhood in 1935 and agreed to a contract with them in 1937. Employees gained two, what was that, 2,000 uh, in pay increases, a shorter work week, and overtime pay. Mr. Randolph maintained the Brotherhood's affiliation with the American Federation of Labor through the 1955 AFL-CIO merger. Through his success with the BSCP, Mr. Randolph emerged as one of the most visible spokespeople for African American civil rights. In 1941, he, Bayard Rustin, and A.J. Musty proposed a march on Washington to protest racial discrimination in war industries, an end to segregation, access to defense employment, the proposal of anti-lynching law, and of the desegregation of the American armed forces. Mr. Randolph's belief in the power of peaceful, direct action was inspired by, by Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi. And, you know, real quick sidebar, it seems like Mr. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King probably took some pages out of his book, Mr. Randolph's book. Yeah, how about that? See how that works? See how that goes? Yeah, I just, I just, that just hit me. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Randolph threatened to have 50,000 blacks march on the city. It was canceled after uh, the President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt, issued Executive Order 8802 or the Fair Employment Act. Some activists, including Rustin, felt betrayed because Roosevelt's order applied only to banning discrimination within war industries and not the armed forces. Nonetheless, the Fair, the Fair Employment Act is generally considered an important early civil rights victory. At the movement, at, as, and the movement continued to gain momentum. In 1942, an estimated 18,000 blacks gathered at Madison Square Garden to hear Mr. Randolph kick off a campaign against discrimination in the military, in war industries, in government agencies, and in labor unions. Go ahead now. Following passage of the act during the Philadelphia transit strike of 1944, the government backed African-American workers striking to gain positions formerly limited to white employees. Buoyed by these successes, Mr. Randolph and other activists continued to press for the civil rights of African Americans. In 1947, Mr. Randolph, along with colleague Grant Reynolds, renewed efforts to end discrimination in the armed forces, forming the Committee Against Jim Crow and Military Service, later renamed the League for Nonviolent Civil Disobedience. When President Truman asked Congress for a peacetime draft law, Mr. Randolph urged young black men to refuse to register. Since Thurman was vulnerable to defeat in 1948 and needed the support of the growing black population in northern states, he eventually capitulated. On July 26, 1948, President Harry S. Truman abolished racial segregation in the armed forces through Executive Order 9981. Mr. Randolph died in his Manhattan apartment on May 16, 1979. For several years prior to his death, he had a heart condition and high blood pressure, as do a lot of black people. He had, he had no known living relatives as his wife Lucille had died in 1963 before the March on Washington. And, you know, y'all can, you know, uh, Google him if you want to find out more, go a little more in depth on Mr. Randolph. But, I mean, you figure, I, I never heard about him until I saw the movie. And that's a shame because clearly, you know, this man was important in the civil rights movement. He did a lot for our people. He did a lot, you know, and you would think he would be more promoted and known, but he's not. And so, again, that's why I want to make it my, my goal to do these lessons and presentations on a lot of figures that don't get much light, who may not be well known at all, but were very important in our struggle as a people. Because, I mean, the struggle continues. It does not stop, man. I mean, it, it just... It does not stop. The Bible says the day is going to come when the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And I'm like Morgan Freeman in, in, in glory. When? When, oh Lord, going to be our time? <laughs> you know, I'm about to be 55 years old, man. The status quo has always been the same. I mean, nothing's changed, man. Nothing's changed. A few of us got a little something here and there. Whatever the case may be, we may have more wealth now than we ever have. But when we still pale in comparison to the real power structure, you understand what I'm saying? But anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed the lesson. If y'all you know want to look him up, definitely do that. You know, but I want to shine some light on Mr. Randolph. He was very important in that movement and the civil rights movement too. But he don't get no no real shine. But um, 
So on that note, I hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all Shabbat. This is Dr. E from signing off. Shalom, elect. <laughs>